All right, guys, uh, linguine con vongole, uh, one of my husband's favorites. I have in the pan, over low heat, which I'm now going to turn up just a hair, good olive oil, E-V-O-O, -O, with a little bit of butter mixed in. A little bit of butter makes a difference, it really does. So now we're going to add to that garlic and anchovies just to melt them. What do I mean by melt? I, I truly mean melt. Anchovies dissipate and melt into whatever fat you're using, olive oil, butter, or a combination of the two. It will literally melt into it and just fall apart. And anchovies, if you think you don't like them, you might be surprised if you start cooking with them because they taste more akin to salted toasted nuts. They don't taste fishy. They're just a natural salt. I think that's enough. These are really fat cloves of garlic. That's a good quarter cup of garlic we have in there for a pound of pasta. So now we're going to take really good anchovies. It's super important. Spend a little more on the anchovies if you're going to make a lot of pasta dishes with them. It's so important, the quality of ingredients when you're dealing with very few ingredients and when it's a highlight of those ingredients. So I'm gonna put in, oh, five or six anchovies all together for a pound of pasta. You want about a couple tablespoons melted paste in there. Now to melt it, I take the lid and pop it on the pan for a sec. These are the first two pots I ever designed for the kitchen, ever. They're so useful and you can do anything in it. In the five quart, that's this guy, you can use it as a roasting pan. You can put a chicken in it or a big pork or beef roast. You can make soups and stews and chipino because it's deep enough, but it's also shallow enough that I can make a steak or just an egg. The big boy, the big brother here, this guy, you can put 12 years of corn in or cook two and a half pounds of pasta at a time, which is enough for like an army. Plus the pasta, when you're cooking long pasta, the most fun, the most fun, the most fun. You salt your water liberally, right? To season the pasta itself. You no longer have to stand next to a round pot and wait for the spaghetti or the bucatini, or in this case, the linguine to bend to your will, you just drop it in ah! and it fits in the pot already. It's, it's so exciting. I mean, I've been using this pan since we made the test of it, like, I don't know, 16, 17 years ago. And it still makes me so joyous. I smile and squeal or give a little giggle to myself every time I drop pasta in it. It just makes me think of Lady and the Tramp. It's so glorious and makes me so happy. So once we get our aya oil going and our anchovies melt into the garlic oil, I add dry vermouth. Now you can use white wine, of course, delicious. Dry vermouth is white wine. It's fortified white wine. So it has an herbaceous quality to it. It has an extra layer of flavor. And in our house, the way I was raised anyway, my grandpa and my mama, always said that when we cook seafood, we use dry vermouth because it takes the smell of seafood out of the house. I don't know if that's true or not. I don't really care. It's delicious. We have it. My husband loves to make martinis, so it's always on hand. But of course you can use white wine instead. Eh, about a half a cup. I never measure. I just dump it into the pan, so we'll see. Uh, you give that a shake. Now we're going to add lemon zest, but don't put the juice in until the very end. These are such cute little lemons. So our lemon zest goes in. What goes great with lemon zest? Thyme. A little bit of thyme. Boop. Then as little or as much heat as your family loves or as you love, we have two choices for the heat level here. Calabrian chili paste which is actually a little milder than using flakes or ground pepperoncini. <clears throat> I prefer the paste for the sauce, well, because it's already kind of saucy. Give this a stir. Give our linguine a little zhuzh. Long pasta in a long pot. 
Yeah, the whole idea was you could put these guys next to each other on a very narrow space and they can go in and out of the oven too. I love you babies. So now <clears throat> for every four people or one pound of pasta, you need two pounds of either these adorable little manila clams, the little kind of green shells, okay? Or cockles. Those are the ones that have kind of a pointy top to them. And we double soak these. So you put them in a big bowl of ice water and just let them expel whatever's going on, okay? And then I do that twice, just to make sure there's no grit going on. So when we're ready, just about five minutes from service, we pop all these guys into the pan, top it, and shake it. Now, if there's any broken shells before, you know, while you're cleaning them that you notice, bye-bye. If something doesn't open in this pan, bye-bye. So we're gonna let these guys open, toss everybody together, and everybody will be a very happy family in a few minutes. Give our linguine a little stir. All right, guys, so our clams have opened. I have one bowl to collect clam shells. You need that for every two people at the table. Uh, I'm going to add the lemon juice now to finish the clam sauce off with our linguine con vongole. This is the one lemon I zested plus an extra one because they're so tiny. They're so itty bitty. Now we're going to take the most important ingredient when we make our dry pastas especially is a little of the salty, starchy cooking liquid to marry the pasta to all of the sauce and the ingredients that are incorporated into that sauce. This is my other baby. This is the first textile I ever made. So this is, this is funny. These are all of my, these are my OGs. I'm using my OGs. And this is the first day I've ever used my own strainer, a double sink strainer. It's the first time I ever saw it. I'm very excited. So now we take all of the hot pasta, toss it back into the pot. Then we're gonna take a little of our starchy liquid and a little extra of the good olive oil or a little extra butter, whichever you prefer or both, who cares? And we dress the pasta itself. We add all of our liquid, sauce, clams, and let this continue to cook. Always, always season your pasta water liberally and undercook your pasta by one minute, at least one to two minutes because this is called carryover cooking. This pasta is continuing its journey to your tummy, right? So if we want to serve him perfect and nice with a little bite left to it or to the tooth al dente, we have to take it out a little shy of our perfect place because it's going to continue to cook. Especially with clam sauce, you want that, all of those liquids to absorb back into the pasta. Now I'm adding lots of flat leaf parsley, saving a bit for the top. Give it a good stir. And then I do this funny thing. I take celery tops and chop them up. I love celery tops in this. A little chop, but just regular, you know, buy celery or just sort of chop up some of the tops. Wow! That is like a rock concert of fun right there. That uh, is all I got to say about that. Sprinkle, sprinkle. Magic, magic. Insane.